Good morning, everyone. Deocha Pachami Mining Project. This particular project of West Bengal, the government gave a nod for this Deocha Pachami Mining Project. If you see, it's the largest, this Deocha Pachami, this is the largest coal mine project as well as second largest in the world. Very, very significant. It has a huge area. So if you can mine coal out of it, huge amount of reserve, huge amount of fossil fuels will be generated, which could be used for lots and lots of activities. But there is a but, but the thing is that the local people in that area, they are protesting, okay? They are protesting. Why? Because if this mining is undergone in that area, then there is a huge chance that the local communities from that area will be displaced. Have you understood what's the main problem associated in that region? Lots of people are inhabiting and if coal mining is done, those people, those local communities will be displaced, which will be a threat to their community, to their signature, to their living. And apart from that, is it only about the displacement of, is displacement of the community? No, right? It's also about the environmental perspective as well if you are mining coal that means you are destroying the forest you are destroying you are imbalancing or you are maintaining whatever balance was maintained you were creating an imbalance in the ecology and the environment and if the local ecology is being disturbed the entire food chain and the entire food web will be harmed i hope you can understand regarding the food chain and the food web right one species is connected to the other species isn't it if A is here, A will be eaten up by the B, B will be eaten up by the C. Sometimes they are also interconnected. So in this way, we have an interconnected series of food chain and food web. If there is imbalance in, our, in one species, there will be the destruction of the entire food web and if there is the destruction then you cannot imagine what can be the consequences right so which one which is the tribe you should know the tribe with their which will face straight out of this project that is basically the santhal community a scheduled tribe that's the santhal community will face a lot of problem out of this and now there could be a question. This mining project, why it has not been included under EIA? Environmental Impact Assessment, right? Environmental Impact Assessment. Whenever you are trying to do any kind of activity, any kind of work, it should undergo a kind of assessment with the help of this environmental impact assessment isn't it i hope you remember regarding eia isn't it yes but the thing is that there are certain conditions from 5 hectare to 25 hectare the condition is that if you mine then it will be it does not require any eia clearance or environmental clearance so this is the reason for which it has been exempted from eia so one thing i hope i told you once this initial eia initially it was in 1994 then some kind of amendments came into the year 2006 and finally it came in the year 2020. Out of all this, if you ask, which one is the best EIA? From the perspective of both the ecology as well as from both the people, if you want to live in a sustainable manner, in a friendship way with the nature, 
the EIA notification for the year 2006 was the best. Okay? But some kind of amendments again were brought to the EIA notification 2006 in the year, which led to the EIA 2020. And these 2020 EIA, it exempted a lot of things. It excluded a lot of things from undergoing environmental clearance. That means huge numbers of projects does not require environmental clearance if it's felt to be under certain conditions that have been given. Now, because of these, the main problem arises is that because of these, there is a threat towards the local community. There is a threat towards the nature in which people and the other organisms are surviving. Next, Northern River Terrapin. It was in news because some of this terrapin, okay, some of this terrapin from this terrapin mainly in our place, it is present in the Sundarban. So if you say Sundarban, it's made a, a part is in West Bengal and a major part is in Bangladesh, right? The Sundarban mangrove forest. Hmm. So now from India, a major, a large number of terrapins have gone to the Bangladesh. Now the thing is that it's obvious these terrapins or the turtles, do they know that this is India, this is Bangladesh? They do not know, isn't it? They are, they are not knowing. They have found some kind of similar environment and as a result, they have moved. So therefore, it was in news. It's also called this Northern River Terrapin, Batagur, Baska. And it's a species of riverine turtle. That means you can see mainly it's a freshwater turtle species native to Southeast Asia. You will find this particular species majorly towards the Southeast Asia. Now one thing, one word is Terrapin. One word is turtle. Okay, I'm writing it down. Terrapin, turtle, and another is tortoise. Yes, see, basically, tortoise that mainly lives on the land. Turtle, marine water, basically, okay. Yes, one thing is that sometimes we use terrapin and turtle interchangeably both are aquatic okay tortoise on land terrapin and turtle are aquatic but when we refer to turtle majorly they are inhabiting on marine water if you want to cite very minute difference and terrapin they majorly live on fresh water and this is the reason as both terrapin and turtle are aquatic Okay, therefore, these words are sometimes interchanged, and this is the reason for which, sorry, this is the reason for which here you can find one is terrapin and here turtles, but we are not referring it to as simple, turtle, simple turtles. We have seen that it as riverine turtles, that means it's a fresh water species. Remember, if we say, as for example, if I say olive. Ridley turtle. So it's basically found in the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. It's a marine water species. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Bhitar Kanika Gahir Matha. It's very much famous for Olive Ridley. Anyway. Coming back to the Northern River Terrapin, it has been classified as critically endangered. This is the reason for which we are very much concerned. If proper protection are not be, we are not being able to take a day will come when this particular northern river terrapin will be extinct critically endangered means very very few species are present okay very few species are present okay one thing of the speciality of this particular terrapin is that you can see it's aquatic okay 
but sometimes if they want to nest it sometimes they can also use the terrestrial but mainly aquatic and during the breeding season sometimes even they move towards the estuaries or the brackish water parts okay they move towards the marine water through the estuaries for breathing and again they will return back to the fresh water so you can see it prefers fresh water habitat so we call it as fresh water turtle but during their breeding season if they have to lay eggs okay they will move towards this saltier environment because of the presence of this tides tides will take their eggs and will be able to spread to a larger distance right and then again they will return back to the fresh water after laying all right and this species is omnivorous and basically it feeds on small waterside plants and also small animals that are 